John Fibonacci by the River Animus River in Durango, Colorado. There you go. Let me get, I guess I'm going to start with picture time. You know, I'm Saul 93. Today's just been a very difficult day. Difficult day. Check that out. It's kind of a God wink. I'll talk, tell you later what a God wink is. Look at this. Boom. Yeah, I didn't even realize it. 23. Of course, you know, I named my son Jordan, my beautiful son Jordan. One, two, three, five on the holla. Boom. Did you know, a little trivia, that this number corresponds with this letter? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, artism matters. John Fibonacci by the river. Saul 93. Who would have ever thunk that I would be Saul 93 by the river? You're like, Saul 93 totally don't get what you're talking about. Yeah, and I got a problem with that. I, I do not love payroll. In fact, let me just tell you about my day. It's been a bad day. Saw 93. I even wrote it down in my journal. You know, and I don't know what it is. I, I don't like to journal bad news. Maybe that's why journaling's good. So check this out. Very hard day. Very hard day. Just listening, um, trying to find finding find God in the in the middle of 93 days of homelessness and just this journey and how I want to share this journey and um, and yet at the same time I'm also a very uh, intensely private person um, but this journey has been epically terrible wonderful awesome holy shit don't ever do this just google NDE don't google NDE Near-death experiences, slacklining is so cool to photograph. Isn't she beautiful? That's how today's been all fucking day. You ever have that? Where you just go, Saul 93, September 5th, very hard day. This is me just trying to get myself out of a funk. I'm like, focus on the faithfulness of God and His Word during difficult times. Question marks. I'm just, oh, just sometimes I just want to kill people. But you can't say that on YouTube. Very hard day. Asking how... How God has been faithful today. Any God winks, hollows. These are just things I'm telling John Fibonacci. Any triple four stacks. What the fuck is artism matters? Any 480 trains in the snow with the falcon flying by. That's my journal. What did you journal? What pictures did you take today? I'm 93 days homeless. Holy shit, how was your day? Well, you know, I'm thankful for that picture 2569 304 I mean you know when you're homeless you're going just even going to the going to uh, the grocery store going to McDonald's and um, you know every dollar just is so appreciative of that and just taking you know pictures of what you're grateful for and even just you know you know one way that I, I think the old expression is is that God speaks to everybody a little bit differently you know for me one way that God really um, speaks to me is through numbers through patterns remember i have a lot of videos on day trading you're not 41 i think it's safe to say that the term uh, artism or autism didn't i'm excuse me artism I have a hard time saying artism matters because that to me it's it's a good thing it's a good thing what do we have here got people in the woods maybe that's a bear going to come up or maybe somebody maybe l mcpherson and cindy crawford's going to come over here and be like holy shit jonathan minoji will you take our picture I make sure I was, you know, I was in Saul 93 homeless, and then boom, I'm talking about pictures, and then Cindy Crawford and Elle McPherson show up, and I'm like, holy shit. Artism matters, guys. Artism matters. So here you go. One, one way that God speaks to me or blesses me is with numbers, and there's kind of almost a, 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 a music to numbers and, and a pattern to numbers, and that's one reason why I love day trading. So one of the things that I like to do in difficult times is to intentionally focus on um, the faithfulness of God, or sometimes I just have to force myself to read the promises of God, like force myself to like fucking work out and go read the promises or go read the Psalms. That's one reason why I carry the Psalms with me. You know, John Fimonoji, remember that picture? Beautiful La Jolla, California. You know, what do you keep in your journal? There I am, John Fimonoji, doing a little left shoulder action. I have no idea what that means. It's just my journal, me just being open with you about the struggles that I face or been dealing with. And, you know, not everybody's going to advertise homelessness, but I'm like, you know, holy shit, if I could help somebody and help bring compassion and awareness 
to homelessness. Holy shit. I mean, if John through the nosy, I mean, if, if I can help homeless people in L.A. and San Diego and your, your neck of the woods, La Jolla, um, Malibu, I keep saying Los Angeles because Los Angeles is the homeless capital of the world. So, you know, to, when I was out in Los Angeles, I was teaching at UCLA uh, for, for that camp. I was kind of a two-week fill-in guy, and that was its own little God wink, a little blessing. I needed housing. I had one of the most incredible experiences that I've ever had when I taught, taught at UCLA. But I don't have my master's. I only have my bachelor's. So, otherwise, I'd probably be teaching. Then I did some open, open mics at the comedy store, and then slowly remember, remember my truck got repossessed and then boom 93 days very hard day homeless by the river um so what do you do during difficult times you know it's real easy to have uh, faith if you will when things are good um there's there's um it's not easy to uh to you know, just to be really honest about the spiritual path and challenges, especially when you have economic challenges. I mean, you lose your Christian friends the first. And, and you know, this journey of 93 days of homelessness has been um, a spiritual journey, too. Um, and it hasn't been all bad. I mean, the faithfulness of God has been sometimes obscene. I mean, holy shit. I mean, I'm fortunate enough to go homeless in beautiful Durango, Colorado. And we've had, except for a few nights of crazy monsoon stuff, we've had some a reasonable summer. Well, there's about 100, 200 people that are homeless in this city that nobody really talks about, you know, and then they get jobs. And In fact, I just lost my, jo- my first job as a homeless person or second or third job because, you know, um, I told my boss I didn't have a phone, so she fired me. Think about that. You know, next time you want to kind of mock somebody and go, go get a job, say, well, how are they going to call that homeless person on what phone? In fact, when I just told my boss that I was homeless, I was fired. I'm not going to mention the name of the place because I'm going to sue the fuck out of them in federal court, citing gender as a federally protected status. And it's time we start using, oh, there I go again, photography guy talking about federally protected statuses and why they're relevant. The beautiful... To me, that's porn right there. It's a really nice, holy shit, beautiful. Yeah, federally protected statuses and why they're relevant in, well, in criminal and civil cases. I mean, and we, we need to start having an honest conversation about how men are treated um, by the civil and criminal system and how really homelessness in, for some men uh, begins when they're 18 years old. Um, you know, for me, I was a foster child, so I think there's something to be said for you know my upbringing and maybe the way I made decisions based on my upbringing. Never really having a permanent home. I think, um, well, we'll talk about the journey to homelessness later. Right now, I'm Saul 93, and I'm so fortunate that I live in Durango because it's still very, very difficult here. Um, in fact, this guy here, he, was, he played a role in my homelessness. This is a uh, parking attendant. Remember, I just went to jail for parking tickets, and it was only because I photographed him kind of. Uh, there, was, there was a snow thing, and I couldn't. Here he is. You know, parking ticket. How can a parking ticket guy help? promote homelessness or are we even thinking on that level well maybe this journey of John Fibonacci goes homeless 93 days of legit wood shit we can understand that man even when you have overzealous parking people who sort of well once I let him know that I didn't appreciate his tickets I got tickets every fucking day I ended up getting a thousand dollars in parking tickets but when I couldn't pay that that one thousand dollars I went to jail for two and a half days I was literally strip, strip search over parking tickets. Why is that irrelevant? Well, first of all, middle class people and rich people, they just pay the fine. So, and secondly, Google cake mom is caught in the middle of a suicide or she was literally killing her child and that judge gave her a cake. I mean, 
we need to start thinking about gender equality when it comes to sentencing and the way men, even for parking tickets, you know, can do time. Where women, there's a, a legit story of a woman here in Durango who was just Google cake mom because the judge gave her a fucking cake after she re, was quote rehabilitated after she was literally caught in the middle of homicide. And that's the way the, the system is becoming is women get cake judges, men get strip searched for parking tickets. And then I have another hearing on the 27th and I can go to jail again because I don't have a lot of these. Well, I have a first amendment. And it's time that we start having an honest conversation about homeless men and how minorities and, and men are really going homeless. And, and we need to start having that conversation. And even a parking ticket meter person can put a person um, on, the, on the path to homeless. Because what if I would have had a jail? What if I would have had a job and I had to go to jail because I didn't have a thousand hours? I could have lost that job. And then, well, you know, I told you the story where I was at the Caboose Motel and um, the guy knocks on my door and he's posing as a police officer, but he's there to repossess my, my, my vehicle. Well, if I impersonated an officer, I would go to jail. I, that would be even a, a ticket, a citation. Well, that guy not only impersonated a, an officer, but injured me while he's repossessing my vehicle. It's, yeah, it's true I didn't have the money for the vehicle, but I couldn't even get an incident report for an injury because I was poor. I still am poor. And to this day, I still cannot get incident reports. Think about the, the, the causation and, core, and just think about what happens when you have millions and millions of African Americans in these urban cities that they, they can't get incident reports because they're poor. With no incident report, no charge, no charge, no hearing. And then here in Durango, as the Durango Herald reports, you often can't even um, get a jury trial. You know, you think about gender equality and federally protected statuses and not getting jury trials. Once we start having those conversations, we realize that it's affecting men. And men are paying such an unfair burden. And we need to start looking at the word that feminists like. And that word is equality. And is there equality in sentencing? No, there's not. In fact, where I eat at the beautiful manna restaurant up there, that beautiful manna soup kitchen that started by the Sacred Heart Church here on 3rd and 5th, that beautiful work of God called manna. That's where I eat. And it has delicious food and it's a wonderful, wonderful respite for poor people and poor families and yes, mostly poor men. And it's a beautiful place and it's one of the, it's one of the things I like most about Durango, not just because it sustains me, but it gives me hope in the human fucking race. And notice, I'm not going to churches to eat. I'm going to manna. Praise God for manna. Thank God for manna. But where I do dishes, I did dishes with a woman who killed a man and, is due, and only got 200 hours community service. And then right now, pending, there is a trial where a 17-year-old kid was out drinking and he unfortunately killed a white woman and he's facing a litany of felonies. And we have cake judges, and we have parking ticket meters that, I mean, we need to have an honest conversation. Well, back to Godwinks. I finally get paid after I lost my job for not having a phone. So then I'm gonna go pick up my check. Of course, I go to these people, and I get the runaround. Of course, my check is half as much as it's supposed to be, even though they're talking about living wage employers. And I tell them, I'm going to, talk, I'm going to do a documentary on homelessness and the living wage. 
and are men treated differently than women? Well, here's a great example. This is, the, this is my last paycheck from the job that I just got fired from because I didn't have a phone. I worked 24 hours. They cut my pay, and I just said, well, okay, I'm just going to document it. And I said, well, and, you know, she pivots to this person. And for you, $100 may not be a lot of money, but when you're homeless, $100 is a fortune. And so this guy, of course, they always pivot, and he tells me to go talk to them, even though she's the, the HR person. And then, of course, she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't do shit. And he's like, well, I'm here just because I need you. And then eventually I'm like, I'm homeless, nigga. I just want you to do your fucking job. And you talk about living wages, and yet you're also doing this. So who's having that discussion? I just want to get paid the hours I rightfully worked before I got fired for not having a phone and admitting that I was homeless. Anyway, I go cash that check because I want to do things like laundry and pay towards a phone. And one of my favorite numbers, of course, 8, 480, 7. This may not mean a lot to you, but you know, for no reason, the woman just says, Hey, you got a lot of sevens today. And then I look at it, and it's my son's, my, Michael Jordan. I mean, my son Jordan. I got a beautiful son, a beautiful daughter. Of course, cake judges exist in the civil case world too. And I'll tell that story however feebly uh, or honestly. But we need to start talking about our local communities. Well, that's my Saul 93. I just wanted to get paid. My thinking is if you're the payroll department, why are you asking me to go talk to somebody else? Just do your fucking job. On 2530 Colorado Avenue. A little palate cleanser. Love to hear your thoughts. Remember, I'm going to ask you how many days have you been homeless if you have a lot of complaints. But I would love to hear your thoughts on this journey. Saul 93. Where's my family? Remember, keep in mind I have two family, two, two, parent, two living parents and five brothers and sisters living that know about this. Several church members do. Of course, they just want to pray for me. And I want to quote to them the Bible. I'm like, well, doesn't the Bible talk about this very situation and the Good Samaritan? And they say, just go get a fucking job. I'm like, I'm trying to go get a job. I was going to apply at this place called Bread, but they take their employees' tip money. So even in beautiful Durango, even though I love Durango, sometimes people will just put chairs out here for no reason. I hate that color. I love the stripes. Even Bread, the beautiful Bread, will take money from their employees because they can, because Durango has an economic problem. And that problem is called poverty. It's not called homelessness. Homelessness is the term that we use to objectify people that we don't like. Homelessness is an economic status. It's not a person. Thank you, Durango Herald, for, for, for uh, some good journalism where they were talking about how bread steals their... I mean, think about that. Most people who work as a, in the service industry make their money from tips, and this bakery is stealing their tip money. So you think you're giving money to an employee or not. Bread bakery, what the fuck is your response? Durango Herald, have you followed up with this channel or with that, that incident? Email me, americano417 at gmail.com. I would love to tell you about how even just... You know, $100 missing from my final paycheck after getting... And I think federally protected statuses matter. Maybe we need to go back to old school journalism, Durango Herald. Jonathan Noji is out. Just love that picture. The God Winks. For no reason, when I cash that check, she says, you know, and she even waived the, the $5 fee. She had no idea I was homeless, but that was God working through her. She gives me a number. She says, I don't know. I just want you to have all these sevens on this one. Sometimes in the, in the valley, you've got to remember God's faithfulness. Go to the Psalms. Go to art. Even if it looks like that. Beautiful. 
any of these prints, you can buy them. All my prints are $150. If, you, if I happen to photograph you, um, your print is $48. Otherwise, your print is $150. Uh, and any print of the bees or anything that's, uh, you know, like that has a sign of mana, uh, that $150 will go directly to mana to help uh, really to, to replicate what they're doing uh, in that beautiful model. So if you like the bee pictures uh, at mana, uh, if you send me $200, bucks, i will give $150 to uh, either directly to homeless people uh, or to the mana um, here in Durango. That means I would only clear $50. Bucks. So if you want to buy any pictures like that, uh, that money, uh, just keep in mind that $150 goes directly to MANA because um, what they're doing, the MANA out here, is um, they're, they're keeping men alive. And to quote um, from the, to quote the, uh, that, that great line from Munich, remember Steven Spielberg's uh, epic c- cinematography, wonderful thing called the Munich, remember that movie? Where Golda Meir says, nobody cares about dead Jews. Remember that line? Well, why am I doing this? Why am I being so candid about my own journey? Saul 93 of homelessness. Why am I telling that story? Because it's embarrassing to tell. But it needs to be told. Because nobody gives a fuck about men. Nobody gives a fuck about minority men in their civil and criminal cases. Nobody gives a fuck about cake judges. I mean, nobody's having that conversation I want to. And should I succumb, however dramatic that sounds, I want to make sure that Jonathan Minoji served a purpose higher than himself. And if I can help alleviate 20% of homeless people's burden, holy shit, that's a life well lived. That's Oscar Schindler, holla nigga, you guys be good. Jonathan Minoji is out. Americano417 at gmail.com. Just like the coffee, Americano417 at gmail.com. Dot com.